world, welcome to Tech Deck Deck Tech, the show where I try to do tricks with a finger skateboard but fail miserably, so instead I show you how to play Commander Magic the Gathering, this time featuring Alicia, who is out of focus. What's that? Alicia who smiles at death. There it is. This deck tech is in honor of the plight of transgender folks out there. Um, Alicia, in the lore of magic, is the first ever uh, male to female transgender character, but more relevant to our interest. She is a 3 2 body for 3 mana with first strike, and whenever she attacks, you may pay black, white, black, white, total of 2 mana. If you do, return target creature card with power 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. She just oozes resilience. Now, as you might expect in a deck based around the graveyard, um, buried alive and entombed style effects are incredibly important. They set up the entire game, basically. During a recent game of Commander, I cast Buried Alive very early. What I grabbed with it was Anger, which grants my creatures haste while it's in the graveyard and I control a mountain, uh, Solemn Simulacrum, which if you're watching an EDH deck deck, you already know what it does, and Cartel Aristocrat, just a basic sack outlet. And one of my opponents made a comment. They said, oh, I was scared. I thought you were going to get something, like, much more intense. <laughs> I could have grabbed something much scarier looking like Master of Cruelties, which coupled with Alicia has the ability to one-shot an opponent if they don't have blockers, but where would that leave me then? This sets me up for a really long resource-rich game. I can cast Alicia, she'll have haste because of anger, I can attack, and if I have two mana up, uh, I can bring in a Solemn Simulacrum, which ramps me further, then the next turn, I'll swing again, I'll bring back the Cartel Aristocrat, if someone tries to block the Aristocrat, I can sack the Solemn to give it protection, drawing me a card, and setting me up to next turn, Repeat the whole thing with Solemn Simulacrum. If you can recur Solemn like three times, four times, you are going to have a fantastic game. MVP for sure. Other potential reanimation targets for Alicia include Burnished Heart, which is a great early game play because you don't need a sack outlet to start getting value, value, value with it and Alicia. Um, Disciple of Bolus is great if you're running out of gas and just need to like refill your hand. Um, Anafenza is kind of a confusing include until people realize its synergy with Murderous Red Cat, but we'll talk about that more when we start discussing our win conditions. Same thing with Triskelion, it goes infinite in all sorts of ways, but aside from that, it's just a 4-4 body that can be recurred with Alicia that pings. Felden is another way to do basically what Alicia does if somehow someone deals with Alicia, makes her prohibitively expensive. And also if we lose him, we can recur him, his power is only 2. Um, Karmic Guy, blah, every Alicia deck needs like 8 copies of this. <laughs> Flying, protection from black, and Echo, which might seem like a drawback at first glance, but I promise you it's a feature, not a bug, because it allows you to put Karmic Guy back in the graveyard, setting yourself up for another ETB trigger courtesy of its interaction with Alicia without needing a sacrifice outlet. When Karmic Guide comes into play, choose target creature card in your graveyard and put that creature into play. It's not tapped and attacking so they can't just block and kill it and it doesn't have to have power two or less. Creatures that you might consider grabbing from your graveyard with Karmic Guide include Revel Arc, which goes infinite with Karmic Guide plus a sack outlet. We'll talk about that when we talk about wing conditions, as will we Micaeus the Unhallowed. Also goes infinite in like a thousand different ways. Um, Rune Scarred Demon is just a demonic tutor on a body. I'm close to cutting Avacyn because whenever I stick her to the board, she seems to get dealt with pretty quickly with like a Chaos Warp or uh, Swords to Plowshares. And then there's a big target sign on my head because I'm the dude who makes plays like trying to stick an Avacyn on turn, I don't know, four. To get as much value as possible out of Alicia, you need, need, need a sack outlet online at all times so that you can keep setting up those juicy ETB effects from power two or less creatures. And my sack outlets of choice, right now anyway, um, are Cartel Aristocrat and Viscera Seer because there's no timing restrictions as to when you can sacrifice the creature and these are both recurrable sack outlets with Alicia in case the board gets wiped or something. My next favorite is Sadistic Hypnotist. It's kind of mean, also recurrable with Alicia because its power is two, um, but the problem is its sack effect is only at sorcery speed so you can't do it like on an opponent's turn. But forcing an opponent to discard two cards just by like sacking a creature is pretty strong. They're on Ashnod's Altar Gold Standard for sack outlets and Maw of the Obsidot, which honestly I should probably switch for an altar of dementia. Then I have a suite of tutors, I have some spot removal. Not as much spot removal as I normally run in my decks because um, I favor in Alicia mass removal. I figure that Alicia is able to recover quicker than any other deck at the table in, in most games. I have some sorcery speed ways to recur creatures in case someone deals with Alicia or I need to recur more than one creature per turn and they both have flashback for value. And these three cards don't exactly fit in any other category, they're just good utility cards. Um, dual cast 
Master Mage has great synergy with Felden, first of all. Or if they cast like a Rite of Replication, piggyback that to make infinite dual caster mages and then just win. Grim Harris Specs, I mean, you can't bring it back with Alicia because its power is three, but if you're sacking creatures left and right, you're gonna draw some cards. And Gift of Immortality is just like so good in so many ways. First and foremost, you can use it to just protect Alicia. She needs to attack pretty much every turn, so if your opponents have strong enough blockers to kill her, this just brings her right back. Or say you have cards like that on the board. Drop a Gift of Immortality on a Rune Scarred Demon, then sack it at the end of every second main phase. Trigger goes on the stack, comes back into play, get a tutor, repeat at the end of the next second main phase. In a four player game, that's four tutors per turn cycle. Or you can do the whole solemn thing too, that's pretty good value. So far, what I've shown you is pretty standard for an Alicia deck. You may well have seen something very similar to it in your local meta. What I feel sets this deck apart though is when I was still in beta with it, I found that it was underperforming a little bit. I also had an underperforming Duretti deck, and I realized that decks that are trying to recur artifacts and decks that are trying to recur small creatures have a lot of overlap. So I ripped them both apart and made them have a baby with each other. Mm. I mean, Goblin Welder, my goodness, if we lose it, we can bring it back with Alicia. And what are we feeding to Goblin Welder and Duretti? Mana rocks for days. The fact that we're in three colors opens up so many great uh, signets and talismans and stones and spheres. And what are we bringing back? Well, Skulk Lamp is good regardless of the artifact sub theme. We have another board wipe, a way to give everything flash, another sack outlet slash value engine, a way to draw more cards, a way to get any artifact we want out of our deck into play, draw more cards, win the game basically. Uh, Sac oh, this Okay, so, all right, this is an infinite combo. I believe it is time for us to talk about our tech, 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 tech win conditions. Wah! I guess we'll start with that combo I just teased you with. Um, the first piece is Ugin's Nexus. The relevant bit of text is, if Ugin's Nexus will be put into a graveyard from the battlefield, instead exile it and take an extra turn after this one. Now, if our goal is to take infinite turns, obviously we don't want Ugin's Nexus to simply be sacked once and exiled forever. It will still technically be exiled, but we will be exiling it with purpose to prototype portal. When it comes into play, exile an artifact card from your hand, X, tap, put a token into play that's a copy of that artifact, right? So the way this works is uh, we cast Prototype Portal, we imprint the Ugin's Nexus, and then we have a Quark Clan Ironworks, which is just a sack outlet for artifacts. Tap the portal and five mana, make a copy of Ugin's Nexus, sack it to the Quark Clan Ironworks, take an extra turn, do the same thing on the next turn, and kill them all with fire. Other win conditions include, I mean, any number of iterations between these six cards and a sack outlet. Let's say you have a sack outlet and Alicia on the battlefield, and these three cards in your graveyard. Swing with Alicia, pay for her trigger, bring back Karmic Guide, trigger, bring back Revel Arc, sack the Karmic Guide to Cartel Aristocrat, then sack the Revel Arc, trigger on Revel Arc, bring back Karmic Guide and Murderous Red Cap, Murderous Red C Cap, <laughs> I keep wanting to say murder is red crap. Red crap will deal two damage to an opponent. Karmic Guide will trigger. You'll bring back the Revel Arc. Then you'll sack. Then you'll sack. Then you'll sack. Trigger. You'll bring back these two. Deal two damage with the crap again. Uh, bring back the Revel Arc. And just keep doing this until all of your opponents are dead. I guess I shortcutted Red Crap's Persist trigger, but it still works, just sack it twice. <laughs> Alternatively, Red Cap plus Sack Outlet plus Anafenza and or Micaeus goes infinite because you sack the Red Cap, Persist trigger, comes back, adds a minus one, minus one counter, then it cancels out the minus one counter with the plus one, plus one counter of Anafenza or the Undying trigger here, and uh, then you just keep doing it until your opponents are dead. You can also swap out Murderous Red Cap for Triskelion as long as you have Micaeus, not Anafenza. That one doesn't work. Let's goldfish a game! Woo! I have not stacked my deck. It's entirely random. Like, whatever happens, happens. So I guess let's find out. Uh, we're gonna play six turns here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Okay, I like this hand a lot. The question is whether or not we get to that all-important third land so we can crack the myriad landscape. I think what we pitch to the partial Paris mulligan is... Uh, it feels weird getting rid of an Enlightened Tutor, but I'm going to do it. And also the Kadaltha Forge Master. So pitch two, draw two. One, two. Got that land. Okay, I think we keep this. Turn one, we will draw a card and we'll drop a myriad landscape tapped and then we'll pass turn untap this will be turn two we will draw a felden of the third path we will play i suppose a plains and pass turn turn three we will draw Ooh, buried alive good news i guess we have to just play 
reflecting pool, and all right, do we wait and crack the landscape or do we drop the commander sphere? I think we drop the commander sphere because then we can also cast vampiric tutor, right? Um, so commander sphere, then end step before our turn, we will cast vampiric tutor. What are we grabbing? Normally we have vampiric tutor for buried alive, but it's already in our hand. So I grabbed a soul ring, put that on top, we'll untap, we'll draw. This is turn four. And then I better to, to think for a minute here. I think what we want to do with turn four is ramp as hard as possible. So um, I will tap the myriad landscape to cast soul ring. One, two, three, four. Um, I will cast solemn simulacrum. Trigger. We're going to search for a mountain and put it into play tapped. We will untap for turn five. And I sure hope that we draw a land. That would be just peachy keen. We got not a land. Okay, that's okay. If we had gotten the land there on turn five, we would have eight mana enough to cast Alicia, cast Buried Alive, get Anger in the Yard, and swing and pay for her trigger, bringing whatever we put in there back. Instead, let's just make sure we can do that next turn. We'll tap one, two, three, four. Um, we're going to cast a Doretti. We're going to pump Doretti up to five. We're going to discard Rune Scar Demon and Trading Post to draw two cards. One and two still not a land and i don't think we well i guess we can cast the boros signet that's fine uh myriad landscape and commander sphere will tap to drop the boros signet and then we'll pass turn now turn six the last turn that i'm gonna goldfish because then it just gets far too complicated i will draw for turn oh goodness avisa we are going to for one two i guess three cast buried alive we're going to put in the yard Karmic Guide, Disciple of Bolus, and Anger. And then we're going to, for one, two, uh, gotta tap for this carefully, actually. Red, two, I guess like that, three. We will cast Alicia. She has haste because Anger's in the yard. We'll swing, trigger, Karmic Guide will come into play, and we'll bring back Disciple of Bolus, sacking the Solemn Simulacrum, gaining two life, and drawing three cards total. Um, and then we're in really, really good shape. I hope you enjoyed this. Go play magic and have fun and kick ass. Tech, 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 tech. Woo! Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs>